Good evening, I'm Jay Zamanik, and today we are here for our senior spotlight series for campus media for ETV, WFSE, and The Spectator. And today I am here with my first interviewee, Julia Cardin, the executive editor of The Spectator. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Good, and, and how are you feeling about graduation? Uh, it's a little nerve wracking, but I'm excited. Well, I got a couple questions for you today. So the first question I have for you is, what has been your biggest accomplishment in The Spectator? Yeah, so um, I've won a couple of awards individually that have been um, really fun and rewarding. Um, I would say, though, that watching um, my staff grow as writers as well um, has been really re rewarding to kind of grow together as a staff. That is excellent to hear, and The Spectator is one of the well-known newspapers around town, and it's a, always a pleasure reading. So question two, how has writing news articles improved your overall writing style? Yeah, um, I've really been able to kind of hone in and find my individual voice as a journalist and a writer through um, The Spectator, just because um, it's much different than just writing for classroom assignments, because you just get a little more freedom with what you want to do. And that's great, because there's all sorts of writing styles that you can play around with and versus the classroom, so it's a whole Pandora's box. Mm -hmm. So question three, how do you know what stories will make the paper, and why might not one make the story? Um, we are short-staffed, so we do, unfortunately, kind of have to pick and choose. We would love to cover everything, but we just don't have um, the staff and the resources this semester. Um, so we kind of go off of student interest, what we think um, will get the most reads, what will get the most clicks, what students want to read. And it also goes off um, individual writers, what they want to volunteer to write for. So it's kind of like, again, you have an idea and you try to go write for it yep. to the best of your ability. Yep. So going into that, for question four, describe the creative process of writing a story for the spectator. Um, yeah, so it kind of starts um, in our weekly meetings. We go over um, a list of stories that we've gathered. Um, and it kind of goes off first basis, like what's high priority. Um, and then also just what students have the time to do. Um, so after we pick, um, we have the week to then interview sources, research, and get the story together. Um, and for me personally, after um, an interview with a source, that's when like I really start to have the story come together. Because you can have an idea in your head and have a vision, but until you know what your direct sources say, you know that can change pretty quickly. Yeah, you have to limit it down and mm -hmm. do a lot of uh, adjustments as necessary to make the story the best and most worth it for students who want to click on it. Right. So question five, my final one for you. What are your future plans after college, graduating from Penn West? Mm -hmm. um, so I graduate this semester um, in the end of this week. And then um, in the first week of July, I'm actually um, starting grad school at Syracuse, their um, grad program. Uh, it's through their School of Public Communications, but the program I'm doing specifically is news, um, magazine, and digital journalism, so um, more training for writing. That is excellent to hear, and thank you for all your contributions you've done for Campus Media and for The Spectator, and we here from ETV wish you good luck. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Our next senior we would like to spotlight here is a person I know very personally and been a good friend of mine for the past semester or two, my good old buddy Luke Stewart, who has done ETV, and DJ Stu of WFSE. So Luke, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me, Jay. It's always a pleasure. So I got more questions for you. So question number one, what has your, been your biggest accomplishment here on ETV? My biggest accomplishment on ETV has definitely been learning how to edit. Editing was always a struggle for me. And with the help from, from you, from Dr. Wirtz, I've gotten much better at that skill, at that. And yeah, I've just been, feel really bit better about myself. And then also you got to work with a camera and other things around the studio here. So does that also play a role? Absolutely. I also went to events I never would have gone to, like sporting events. I'm not a sports guy. But I had to go to all these football and basketball games and film film them, and yeah, I've actually really enjoyed doing those. All right, so let's switch to your other mainstay here on Campus Media, 
And what has been your biggest accomplishment in WFSC, our campus radio station? My biggest accomplishment has definitely been being confident in my voice. I used to hate listening to myself, but with radio and being the host of my own show, I've learned how to actually be confident and actually tolerate listening to myself. So I absolutely feel And great. your voice is very essential in campus media nowadays, either for TV or The Spectator or for WFSE or anything in that matter. So it's great that you have a platform to express your voice and your opinions out to the local community. Absolutely. I, I had so much fun. I've been doing it for a year, and it would be the best year of my life. Absolutely. That is awesome. So speaking of WFSE, you have your own show I'm aware of known as Awesome Movie Mix, mm -hmm. playing all the best songs from all the best movies. So how has Awesome Movie Mix helped you with your journalism career in, within the past year? Definitely, with how it's helped with my journalism career, definitely with research, because I'm playing songs from movies, so I have to double check which songs are from which movies and how relevant the song is in the movie. And yeah, that, that's how it's helped, for sure. And I've been a very frequent listener of your show. And the stuff that you've done is just beyond incredible. And I, I'm going to really miss that show, honestly. So You and Ron both. Yeah, so I'm very excited for that. So my next question is more of a personal deep. So, you have an autism and me have an autism. How does this help you with your creative input in campus media as a whole? I would say it's helped in just, in just being myself. Really, that's all I can say. Just being creative and just yeah, not being afraid to just put it out there, I would say. Absolutely. Like we said before, with the voice and expressing our opinions to one another and we each have our own all so hobbies out there we have from yeah. roller coasters to movies to hey guardians 3 of all things so it's very it's been very fortunate that even though it's a learning disability and some people might shun it to the side it's great to have it for the creative input we implement the campus media so absolutely and bring awareness to it as, as we do on our shows absolutely bringing awareness to campus and beyond so my final question for you is a simple one. What are your future plans after graduating here from Penn West Edinburgh? Well, the immediate plan is on the side to go work for my dad in landscaping as a summer job, as I always do and have been doing for the past couple of summers. But the, the actual career goal is to get my foot in the door at one of the local radio or TV stations. and. Right, right. Hopefully, get some DJing gigs. I actually do have a DJ gig this summer already. So, and we have plenty of opportunities in Erie with all the radio stations and news programs we have, such as Jet, Erie News Now, Star 104, Rocket 105, etc. So, we have plenty of options for you to dive in head first with. Absolutely, I am looking forward to to contacting one of, some some of them, just seeing what, what happens. That is excellent to hear, Luke. So thank you so much for being on here. I'm definitely going to miss you as a friend. And thank you for your contributions here on ETV and WFSE. From everyone here at ETV, best of luck to your future. Thank you. I'm going to miss you, too. And for our final interview today, I am here with Nathaniel Thomas, the director of streaming media and the sports director of broadcast media for WFSE and ETV. So Nathaniel, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm Definitely ready for graduation at the end of this week, wrapping up some of my final streams. I had my last athletic stream on Thursday with softball against Cal, two very close games, but sadly we dropped both. And I have commencement on Saturday. Sat Saturday. The, what a, after last week, all my days are just merging into one, but Saturday, 2 o'clock commencement, my last stream. That is awesome to hear, and we are very proud of you. So our question's for you. So question one, what have been your accomplishments as a sports director for all this time? So this is my second year 
third semester in this position, I took over as the TV sports director in December of last year. And since then, I have added four new sports to the PSAC Digital Network for an umbro. I have added soccer in the fall, swimming in the winter session, and I've added softball and lacrosse in the spring, as long with doing over 130 broadcasts in two years. That is amazing to hear. That's a lot of broadcasts in a very short time. Uh, it's a lot of weekends, a lot of late nights. And that's a lot of responsibility to take in, too. It is a lot of responsibility, but I wouldn't be able to do it without the help of the ETV crew coming and running cameras. I'm just the guy behind the camera running the stream, doing the graphics, but I couldn't do it without all the camera people. That is excellent to hear. So question number two here. Why is journalism very important for something like broadcasting for TV or radio? So... My major isn't actually in journalism. My major is strategic communications with minors in digital media production and journalism. I find journalism being very important in all aspects, especially within sports broadcasting, because these college athletes have been playing this sport since they were three, four, five, since they were knee-high to a grasshopper. So it's very important to give them the coverage they deserve as they have been doing this almost their entire life. And at a D2 institution, this may be one of the last times they get to truly participate in a true competitive, a true competitiveness where it's not just beer league on Saturday. Yeah, and this is not like high school where it's every week and you're either playing for fun or whatever yeah. it may be. This is college. This is a big deal for them. Yeah, they may not have a career after that. Yeah, this may be the last time they get to competitively play softball. As we know, women's sports are starting to take an uptick with the NWSL and at the WNBA, but there's still a lot of sports that don't have women's leagues where women can play competitively after college. Right. So, and even going back to that whole concept, like I'm a journalism major myself, so there's simple concepts like reading, script writing, camera work, digital media production, editing, audio production, whatever it may be, that are key components to stuff like broadcast. And would that be a vital key to have? Like, yeah, experience may not be required, but in a professional field after college, that's probably a main key, right? Yes. And like, I'm in a unique sense, so I've been in my position two years. I, I have a ton of broadcast experience, and I'm looking at being in sports information after I graduate. So... My experience within sports broadcasting through a sports information office with all I've done has definitely given me a leg up on some other people coming fresh out of college. As in a lot of the job descriptions, it says sports management degree or communications degree. That's awesome. So across of all of campus media here, which one was your favorite to work with and why? Ooh. We're not picking favorites, but... It's... I feel like I am picking favorites, though, because technically I'm a representative of both the broadcasters. Then I also do some work with spectator photography-wise. So, ooh, I... Um... It's a tough question to look at, but if you say you gain the most experience from... I would say... Okay, so... I've done both commentary and behind the scenes work directing. So I would say my I got a lot of commentary experience working with WFSE. We actually used to travel full schedule with football and the basketballs. 
So traveling with basketball, I've been to every gym in the PSAC West except Cal. Wow. So I've done some pretty long haul trips to UPJ, Pitt Johnstown, Seton Hill, IUP, and that got great experience interacting with other broadcasters from other schools, seeing how they do what they do, getting ideas from them. But also in ETV, learning different uh, directing styles, like Slippery Rock directs a stream totally different than we do, and seeing how other schools direct their streams, as I've even brought some elements from other schools into our streams, such as doing starting lineups. Right. So within that, so I would have to summarize maybe working with WFSC, but all campus media is accounted for. And even like outside of that, like what other campuses do with their media, even looking in a local sense, like how Mercyhurst does it or Gannon does yes. it, is different than what we do here. Yes, and I've brought most of my elements over from Mercyhurst. Mercyhurst, former sports information director, came over to us last year. So he's taught me a lot of other cool things that we can use within our broadcast software production truck, which is not an actual truck, it's just a laptop. But it's brought, I've been able to pull a lot of cool elements over. That is amazing to hear and the work that has been done. So question number four, what tips can you give to someone who is, might be interested in campus media? Do you have any advice for them? Be ready to walk. It's a lot of walk. I've done 14-hour days on campus doing multiple events like homecoming this year where we did the parade at 10. We had football at 2, volleyball at 6, soccer at 7. It's, it's a long day. You, it's a lot of hours, but the experience you get from being in the TV studio directing, sitting in this chair, being an on-air personality, anchoring Edinburgh Essentials, or doing tailgate talks with Mike, and getting all of these experiences are so beneficial. Doing the radio station with Ron across the hall, doing your own show, holding leadership positions, it is so beneficial and can put you way ahead of the crowd when you're applying for jobs, when someone sees hey, I was a sports director for two years at, in campus media. This guy has no campus media experience. And the person doing the hiring is, was in his campus media. He may go with me over the other guy because he knows campus media is a ton of work, especially at a small university like Edinburgh, where campus media is struggling right now to get bodies in the door. And when I switched to my major of journalism in the fall 2021, Nathaniel was the first pe people that I interacted with. And he was so welcoming for me. And I've gained a lot of trust. And I gained a lot of experience within the past year and a half with him. So I am very fortunate to have the tools so when he leaves, I can spread that to other people but what you said is excellent advice for incoming people, either incoming freshmen or other people who might be interested in campus media. And I, I thank you for my behalf for teaching me the ways over the years. Yeah, it's no problem. And you have stepped up multiple times. And I know that you're somewhat local and you live on campus. So if I have a camera guy bail, I can text you and you can usually be to the stadium in 10, 15 minutes, ready to run a camera. Yeah, and always be ready. So Always be ready to be called upon, because if someone bails, you may be getting the call to come. It's kind of like work. So my last question I have for you, what are your future plans after leaving here at Penn West Edinburgh? I know you have a bright future ahead like everyone else we've interviewed today. And what is your next step? So my next step is I'm applying for jobs in sports information. So sports PR, I'm really applying for D, D2 colleges, but I'm open to work pretty much anywhere across the country at any level. I'm, again, in this unique sense where I've directed streams. I've 
I've commentated streams. I've done I've done pretty much and everything a sports information person has to do except write recaps. But with new technology coming, that is actually being pushed to the wayside and making sports information jobs more easy and not as stressful. So you're basically ready to go with the tools you have gained over the years and willing to do anything, anywhere, anytime. Yes. Um, I'm definitely ready to move on. I'm definitely going to miss the Enabro athletics community. Working with the eight teams I've worked with over the last two years has been a ball. I've made lifetime friends. But it, I'm ready for the next chapter in the book of Nathaniel. And that is a good way to end it. So thank you, Nathaniel. And from everyone from ETV, thank you for everything you've done with Campus Media. And thank you for teaching your ways to me to spread it to the future of campus media here. No problem, Jay. It was a pleasure being on today. And that concludes our interviews within campus media. Congratulations to all the seniors graduating. And from here in ETV, good luck with your future. And we will see you next time.